Welcome to Investors Insights, where today's topic is just the beginning. Uh, we chose that topic because a lot of the in information we discussed this morning was talking about this is really just the start of, of new focus for the markets, the economy, and in corporate America. Uh, Greg and Bobby are tied up this morning, so you've got myself, Adam, and Ashley Page uh, on remote. Uh, and so we really dug into looking forward on some topics. And so this week really is the beginning of the silly season when it comes to politics. Uh, the Democratic National Convention starts this week. The Republican National Convention will be next week. Very unique scenarios. A lot of this will be done digital, not, th not the normal big hoopla, unlikely to see huge balloon drops this year, but they're still extremely important from a political and market standpoint because this will be the first look at a detailed policy plan from the two parties. And that's really what the debate and the election will be about. So we really haven't started the election yet. I realize we're under 90 days. Uh, now no November's coming fast, but this will be our first chance to really get a look at the two parties, what they're running on, and where they'll compete, and where the market maybe starts to take size. We talk about how the S&P typically tracks the, the election, and so it'll be interesting to see what parts of the market start to be impacted by that. And you know, speaking of the market and where we stand now, Adam, you brought up some good technical points this morning. Yeah, definitely. And you talk about the election. One other thing that we're looking at is earnings. So, of course, that starts with the consumer. Uh, retail sales came out for July, went up 1.2%. Didn't quite meet expectations. That was due to autos. So we had a little pullback there, but it's still encouraging to see the consumer putting money back into the economy. So from a technical analysis, we are looking at resistance levels. And from S&P 500 index, which we talked about that we track, we saw the 3,330 be the first mark. Well, we've held that mark since Thursday, August 6th. Mm -hmm. Now we still wanna see that trend continue to mm -hmm. see the bullish trend, but the next mark would be your 3,390. So that's really what we're targeting in on right now. And if it falls below that 3,300, we also have some support levels mm -hmm. we'll be looking at. Very important to watch. So we've got some big news, like we said, the Democratic National Convention, Mar markets will start watching politics. Also, some big, big retailers are presenting their earnings, looking backwards about where the consumer spent, see if, the, see if that's good news, if the market takes that well, or if not, does the market break through those support zones? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's really looking backwards. Now, looking forward, Ashley, you had some really good information about corporate America maybe reducing their earnings looking forward to protect against uh, some risk that COVID has brought that we've never really dealt with before. Uh, will you fill us in on that? Absolutely, Trey. Be glad to do that. We always try to give you things on the uh, vlog looking forward that you may not have heard in the popular press. And we think this has the potential to be a large one in the fall. Uh, as Trey is alluding to, you will probably see, starting in September through the end of the year, a lot of COVID-based uh, litigation. It's going to go way up. So uh, Trey's point is correct. There are a lot of companies out there on the balance sheet and impacting the income statement that are taking their litigation legal reserves up. You know, even if you prevail in a lawsuit like that, you've still got to pay money to fight it. The core of this tray is this. When COVID first started, a lot of people were working remotely like I am today. And then as the first wave of kind of reopening came up through about the end of June, a lot of people went back. Well, we've seen a little bit of a second wave here. And so a lot of the litigation is based in the fact that if somebody was brought back by their company tray, that they either got very, very sick and had a lot of expenses with that, or unfortunately passed away with coming back into the company. So they're alleging that maybe a lot of these companies didn't follow proper procedure and protocol when they brought them back. So that's kind of where we are now in the C part of that ABC. The C part of that is probably going to be a lot more litigation over it in the fall. And companies have to prepare for that. You know, it's like anything else. If they have to allocate more to legal reserve, guess what? They're not doing as much R&D. They're not hiring as much product and hiring as many people. So we're watching that as an impact in the fall is one you may not know about. That's it. I mean, that's, that's fascinating. It's going to be very difficult to figure out, but it's definitely going to be extremely impactful. I think it's what what economists call a dead weight loss, something that is a non-productive use of resources. And I think that'll, so it may, it may impact how quickly companies and balance sheets can come back during this COVID crisis. So something that's really not being covered, but I think we believe will be very impactful in trying to look where the puck is going, uh, going into the third and fourth quarter as we're finishing second quarter earnings. So uh, we hope you found all this information helpful, informative. Please don't hesitate to call us if you have any questions. We're here to answer your questions and, and go in more detail on any of these topics. 
Also, we greatly appreciate it when you share these vlogs with your friends and family. Uh, so you can follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. Uh, please don't hesitate to call, and I hope you have a great week.